Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And today I'm recording this on the 25th of July, 2024. God, the year is getting old already. Um, time flies, eh? Yes, and um, I was going to do this video yesterday. I was going to do this video the day before. But then I kept thinking, oh shit, every time I think of making a video, it overwhelms my brain and I get tired and I don't want to make a video. The truth of the matter is, right, that so much news and so much craziness has happened that I feel like I've developed information fatigue and news fatigue over the last few days because it's just, uh, it's been one very interesting month, has it not, you know, on both sides of the pond, where I come from, and of course in America as well. And so... Today, I just don't really want to talk about the news. I don't want to talk about um, anything. I just want to talk about some evergreen topic, I think, you know, that I would like to talk about at the moment. And uh, I decided I want to call this uh, video homeless in every way except having a roof over my head because that's kind of how I feel. Politically homeless, religiously and spiritually homeless, ideologically homeless, epistemologically homeless. I kind of feel like um, in every possible way that it's possible to be human, I feel like I don't really fit in the human race. I don't know what I feel like, kind of alien maybe, or maybe some sort of future human who was just brought in a time machine and dumped 500 years into the past. Something like that, you know? Because, yes, one of the things that does bother me is every time I go online and I listen to what other people have to say, um, and I, uh, everything seems to be ideology driven. Whether it's woke or whether it's anti-woke, whether it's coming from the left or the right, whether it's coming from the liberal or whether it's coming from the conservative. And to some degree or other, I do have a side that I resonate with more, I suppose, than I do with the other side. But this has really got nothing to do with left and right. This is to do with, I see that one side seem like a bunch of stupid morons and the other side seem like they're trying to correct the world from, um, you know, being stupid morons. But in their endeavours to do so, they're bringing the world back to some 1950s paradigm that I feel was incompatible with me as well. Um, so this is the way I see the world. Um, I look at, say for instance, I mean, I don't want to go too much into it, but I'm looking at um, the present people who pass as the political left at the moment. And if I look on one side of the pond, when um, Keir Starmer won, and the, you know, the, the, the usual lefty media, they're just so dumb, they're so stupid. You had all these female journalists going on about how Keir Starmer was so sexy and all of that. And I just thought that just made me want to stick my fingers down my throat and think, God, this is just so nauseating. I mean, you know, I don't need to, um, I I don't need to eat anything that's going to make me puke. All I need to do is read this mainstream rubbish and that, that'll do it. It'll make me sick. You know, head over the bowl on the giant telephone to God, puking, vomiting, sick, right? And then, of course, um, the next thing that happens is that um, within hardly any time of Donald Trump having an assassination attempt on him, Joe Biden suddenly goes missing. People don't know where he is. And it is rumoured. A lot of people think what happened was that one of his handlers decided to, um, you know, get a letter of resignation that he was, um, or, or whatever it was, take a photograph of it, stick it on his X account, because I mean, I can't imagine him being able to use X anymore, right? And then, um, and then uh, threaten him with the 25th Amendment. And then there's no more Joe Biden. And then, of course, you know, Kamala Harris appears to be talking to Joe Biden on a phone call and she almost makes a, a, a slip in her words which make people think that she's actually talking to a recording that the whole thing is just some kind of lie or illusion. So, and then, then, then the mainstream media in America start going on about how great she is and how wonderful she is and how excited they all are, yeah? But the thing about it is that just like on the um, one side of the Atlantic, uh, Britain having Keir Starmer, who doesn't appear to stand for anything or believe in anything, right? And you've got this weird situation of um, uh, the Americans um, are using the, I don't know, the diversity hire card because they, they want to say, oh, look, the first female president, right? But then they exist within an environment where they don't actually know what a woman is. So, you know, how are they going to square that circle? And the whole thing, to me, just seems really, really stupid. It really doesn't have anything to do with whether it comes from the political left. It's just that at the moment, we happen to be in a time where the political left has seriously lost its way and gone into some real dumb but sinister totalitarian territory, right? We happen to be in a time where the political right um, want to course correct back from that. 
And um, I'm thinking to myself, well, ideologically, I don't really fit into any of this. Because when it comes down to it, when push comes to shove, if we were living in a different time, um, like we were, say, in the 1990s, and the left come across as more sensible, and the right come across as anti-fun, puritanical, you know, moral crusaders like they had done in the past, then I would be, my sympathies and the, the side that I think I would resonate with would be more the left in an environment like that. I don't really feel well, I've changed all that much and I don't really feel that my mind has um, changed or that my view on the world has changed. What I think has actually happened is that the world has changed. Something really bad has happened to the world. A very strange ideological flippening has happened, which has caused the world to be very different from the way it was before. And I'm living in a, in a world where pretty much everyone is, to me, is living in some sort of legacy paradigm where they can't, um, actually, they can't actually grasp the changes that have happened around them. And their ideologies, um, if you like, their reality models are very fixed. So they're living in a world where their operating system is very, very incompatible with the present operating system. And so, you know, that's why we have middle-aged and older wokies. That's why we have um, people who can be dragged along with the political left, no matter how much they try to gaslight us, no matter how much they try to take our freedoms away, no matter how much they try to make us doubt what we see with our own eyes, 1984 style because um, people cannot update their own software, if you like, you know, in their heads, because they don't have the hardware, and you can't really use software to fix hardware problems. Well, with me, I just feel like, um, because I, I felt like I've never really fitted in anything, anywhere, any time, I feel like I'm a universal misfit, um, and as a result, I kind of realised that I'm not going to be able to get status by conforming to any norms of any group of any people out there at all. So I've kind of just decided that, yeah, being a misfit, well, that suits me. I can be that way. And I've managed to turn negatives into positives in that way, um, in the sense that I'm not particularly nihilistic. No, I'm actually quite, uh, you know, what I say, quite positive, quite, you know, focused and quite driven and optimistic in a way that I think about um, what the world could be. But then I start to think, well, what am I then? What, what, how do, what do I consider myself? An anomaly, really, I think that's what it is. In a way, maybe it's like being an alien. Maybe it's like being a future human who was dumped 500 years into the past. Because, you know, like I say, um, I... Sometimes I, I listen to some really out there ideas. I was actually listening to the audio book, um, Scott Adams, God's Debris, and I was thinking, this is a work of genius, but I could never come up with anything like this. I'm not really IQ intelligent enough myself to come up with anything like this, but I somehow am able to grasp the concept instantly. And I know a lot of people wouldn't be able to grasp the concept of that instantly. Their ideology, their fixed beliefs and something like that would reject even just being able to open up to listening to something that questions everything on such a deep and metaphysical level. It's the same with the um, Ken Wilber model when I look at that and, um, you know, I see what's going on there and I realise that, uh, you know, yeah, people are very, very stuck and they're very, very entrenched in what they think reality is. They don't ever stop to think that maybe, no, they're just, it's just a model that they have. Someone else may have a different model to them. And if we were okay with that, if we were okay and we just thought, well, the way I see reality is just a, an epistemological cartoon. It's just a set of delusions that I use to model and navigate myself through this infinite universe out there. And I need whatever delusions that I can get in order to be able to feel like I'm sane in this never-ending infinite universe that I'm stuck on this small rock. You know? <laughs> that's, uh, so if only more people could think like that, the world would not be in the mess that it's in at the moment. But the world, it appears, is in a terrible, terrible mess. Because, well, it's clear to me now, it's clear to me now that as I look at the Western world, it's falling to pieces. I don't think there's going to be a Western world for very much longer now, you know? Give it about 20, 30 years into the future, and I see America basically is turning into a sort of like a rough, the anarchic Latino favela, giant one, and I kind of do actually see that, uh, well, Europe, a lot of Europe, will just become some crazy sort of set of Islamic caliphates and um, I don't think it actually can be saved at this point 
I don't think the West can be saved. I think it, every dog has its day, so to speak. It's such a shame, really, when you think about it, because it would be nice. It would be very nice if it could be possible to save the Western world, because the Western world has some of the greatest ideas, and it advanced so enormously and brought great ideas to the world and advanced us culturally, technologically, you know, philosophically, to levels that we never could have got to otherwise. You know, we were we were bound by the limitations of nature and um, you know I'm not one of these people who just thinks automatically that just because something is natural something is um, you know in nature that's necessarily the best thing in a lot of ways I do think that uh, you know the fact that human beings are able to transcend and triumph over nature is actually a really good thing now it depends what you do with the future of that technology if you're looking at people like um, Yuval Noah Harari and the technocrats in Davos and all these people and the sort of transhuman ideas that they have, then I think that they would be taking technology into a direction I would consider to be fundamentally wrong on every level, you know. I can look at futuristic technology and I can look at some and go, no, that technology is wrong, whereas that other type of technology is right. But I was watching a video with someone the other day and um, a couple of his videos I actually thought were really good. But then he'd done a video about individualism and collectivism. And he considered individualism to be a cancer and collectivism to be the natural order of things. <coughs> and at that point I realised, well, no, I'm, you know, what I say, I don't agree with that at all. I do not agree with that at all. I mean, all right, other videos that he watched I like, I agree with. And I don't want to just uh, decide that, oh, he disagrees with me, he's polar opposite to me, therefore he's my enemy, because that's the way people are thinking these days. But I am interested in the fact that, you know, people can have all these opposing views, you know, and um, we should be able to talk it all out. Naturally, we should be able to talk it all out. And yes, I can understand from the perspective of that if we end up living in a world where everyone is a narcissistic me, 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 where everything is about me all the time and fuck the rest of the world and the whole world revolves around me, that what you would call, you know, individualism gone to extremes. Yes, that, I understand, is a problem. But just in the same way that I think that, like, when you have collectivism, and collectivism at its worst has resulted in genocide, um, collectivism at its worst has resulted in unpersoning God knows how many people and then killing well because they don't mean anything they're not really they're, the individual life doesn't matter so you know to hell with them we just killed them you know that's where collectivism has um, gone wrong and um, so I look and I think well you know these you know what you call dual dichotomies where you get to choose between one thing or another thing there's a lot of that going around on the internet at the moment. Is it individualism or is it collectivism? Is it liberalism or is it conservatism? Is it, uh, is it Christianity or Islam or even, dare we say, is it Christianity or is it atheism? You know, it's all about dichotomies and either you're a one or you're the other. And I find this whole level of thinking to be very restrictive and it makes me feel like my brain is shrinking when I have to entertain any of this. Because for me, I kind of feel like I live in a world of trichotomy plus, you know. I live in a world where there could be many ideas and you can basically get as many ideas as possible and you can build yourself a bespoke model of reality which can be complex and can be made up of a lot of things. I mean, say for instance that, <coughs> just like the political compass test, imagine there was a test where it asked you about like, politics, it asked you about philosophy, epistemology, and it asked you about all sorts of different things. And imagine that there was a thousand questions. I kind of think that my um, answers would be so eclectic and so contradictory um, to anyone who comes from any fixed ideological position, it would, I would just seem like I'm, I'm really patchwork and, and that no one would believe that I could have such a diversity of views and such a diverse range of answers on so many different things. And, you know, because we are living in a time where people are either one thing or another thing. The internet, unfortunately, and social media and a lot of the stuff that is going on at the moment seems to be creating a climate of that. You know, that either you're this or you're that. It's a world of dichotomy, 
And I can't live in that world. I just really can't. I mean, for instance, if, and I've said this before, if I was in the UK at the moment, I haven't wrote, voted in a very long time. Um, because I, I just think, what's the point? The government always gets in. But for the first time, I would have been tempted to vote, and I would have voted reform. Now, of course, according to people who live in this either or world, right, the people who would be happy with me voting reform would tell me that, yes, that must mean you're, right, yeah, it must mean you're a conservative, or you're into conservatism, or you're, you're you know, right wing, moderately, they would say. And then you get the people on the other side who would say, fascist, racist, you know, all that stuff, <laughs> that's the thing. And I would think to myself, well, I could try to explain from my perspective why I voted it, but I'd feel that it would be very difficult to get anyone to actually understand where I was coming from. You see, the way I look at it is, I fear that uh, politics has become incredibly stupid in the Western world. The left has become incredibly stupid and is leading us down in, in some very, very dangerous paths because uh, it's stupid. I kind of think that when it comes to conspiracy theories, there are some grand conspiracies, but they don't seem to be working very well at the moment, probably because the level of stupidity involved in the people who are doing conspiring. And so, um, you know, the propaganda is utterly stupefyingly torturous to have to deal with, is it not, you know? And the reason why I say I would vote for someone like um, Farage or why I would vote if I was American for someone like Trump is purely because it would be like taking part in a course correction. Now, it could be that um, if uh, you manage to grab the centre and move it back to where the centre should be and not have it drifting to the left like that, and then I'd find, I'd think to myself as an individual with my bespoke model of reality, right, we've gone centre enough here now, we don't now want to go any more to the right because it would be just as bad as if we went to the left. And at that point, if I felt that uh, many of these people who I'd previously voted for were going off track and taking us too far to the right, I'd say so. Why? Because for me, um, you know, I'm not coming from a fixed point, I'm coming from a floating point, always. And... Um, when I look at politics at the moment, um, I don't see left or right in the way that normal people see left or right. I see what's happening is that one group of people who just happen to be on the left these days are moving the centre to the left um, and it's just created a very distorted and very, um, you know, how can I say, one view. It's like how I am. I'm trying to aim my picture so I'm in the centre. And I kind of think that what's happened is, over time, slowly, bit by bit, they've moved that centre so that the centre in politics appears to be where I'm placing myself now. And no one seems to have noticed. And if you were going to put yourself over just slightly that direction, people would call you a fascist. But what we need is a course correction. The same thing could happen on the other side. But a lot of people don't really have the flexibility of mind to understand that because they're so hung up on the narrow band of ideological forms and you know ideological positions without actually stopping and thinking well what is ideology and then you could start meta programming you know meta thinking all of these ideas and think right am i caught in an ideology am i caught in some sort of program right let's have a look at that ideology let's have a look at that program how would it be if I had this ideology 20, 30 years ago? What would it be like if I had this ideology 150 years ago? How would uh, it fit r relative to the world and the climate that I was in back then? Um, you know, would I be different? Would it be different? But a lot of people don't do that. They get fixed in one position, then the world changes, and they think the world hasn't changed. Uh, a flippening happens. Uh, which has happened recently, people don't grasp that a flippening has happened and they still see the world in a sort of the, the legacy way, their old legacy programming makes them see the world in that way that it was before, you know. And uh, the world is very much different now to the way it was just in the 1980s and the 1990s. Um, and I've said this many a time myself before, the anti-fun lot were on the right in those days and the lefties were quite creative. Now, it seems that uh, as the world has flipped and, um, you know, how can I say, the conservatives are a counterculture and we have a, a kind of what you would call punk conservatism, which would have been an oxymoron to me back in the day, the left are no longer really creative anymore. They just seem to be utterly destructive. So these are kind of like, I don't know what you would call it, a social malaise, social disease, a form of mass collective 
formation psychosis, which takes over people. And um, I'm forever thinking to myself, well, I'm trying to find some deeper levels of thinking here. I'm trying to understand the world in, in ways that are beyond all of this. And it would be good if only more people could do that. Because, you know, we are in whatever time we're in and we're stuck with being in the time that we're in. Um, as we go from one era to another era, we have to live in different reality paradigms. And if we were able to, as I say, to change with it and understand that, um, yeah, we don't need to be left, we don't need to be right. What we need to do is to look at the world and see, well, how does the world need, what sort of course correction do, does the ship that we're on, the ship of this reality, what sort of course correction does it need to be on? Does it mean we have to move slightly this way? Does it mean we have to move slightly that way, you know? Um, and if you think of it literally, wings, if you were a bird and you were a human being in this, uh, if you were a bird and a human being at the same time, well, stay with me on this, right? You're a bird, but you're a human being at the same time, right? The reason why you wouldn't be able to fly is because you'd think one of your one of your wings was evil, so you can't go using that one. So you'd have to flap only your left one, say for instance, and then you never take off, and then you'd never discover flight, right? So this is the way I feel. Um, I feel utterly homeless in that way, ideologically, politically, um, you know, epistemologically, philosophically, because I kind of feel like a lot of these um, philosophical isms that exist at the moment, these, uh, what you call it, uh, off the peg academic isms, whether it be existentialism, whether it be, I don't know, um, I don't know, was it Nietzscheism or whatever, whatever you would call them. I'm not really an academic in this, in this way. But I kind of feel that like, no, the only world that I can live in, the only model that I can build, is a bespoke model of reality that's suited to me and my needs, based on my own discernment, my own observations, and my own individual thinking. And then, yep, it's important to have the confidence to say to yourself, yeah, why can't I do this? Why does it have to be an elite people? Why should I have to even outsource, you know, to these so-called experts? I've got, a hu I've got a brain, I'm human, I'm just like them. Why can't I come up with my own bespoke model? And if more people could do that, develop a sense of confidence in themselves, develop a sense of sort of sovereignty of mind when it comes to stuff like this, the world would be in a far better place. It would be far less of a mess than it's in at the moment, you know? I think that's too much to ask for, but it's things like this that actually do make me feel that I am a 500 years in the future man got into a time machine and went back to a very primitive time where there was very low levels of information. And that's kind of why I feel like, even though I'm not bright enough, not genius enough to write some of the best ideas, some really out there concepts, I grasp them like I'm from a time when, in the future, when that level of information was there available to us. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. I like that. It makes me feel a bit like, uh, well, a cross between pre-woke Doctor Who and Ford Prefect from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you know. Um, in a way, it's kind of cool, because I can lift myself out of any culture, dump myself in any other culture. I like being an Englishman abroad, in this part of the world anyway, you know. I don't mind um, now transcending the idea of culture. I don't mind that I have to go somewhere else. I can't be a somewhere in that world of somewhere conservatives. My, my heart, I suppose, to some degree, is with the people who do want to stay and fight, and I wish, back in the Western world. I wish them good, but that's not for me. Um, what made me who I am, what gave me this accent, what gave me this sense of humour, what gave me the cultural form that I have now, I'm quite happy to wear as an export-only thing. And... Um, got bloody noisy loads of chickens in the philippines saying <laughs> well you know <laughs> but anyway yeah that's basically uh, my my thoughts for today i just absolutely sick to death of the news i'm sick of the information fatigue at the moment and um i'm just taking time out to be away from that all i'd be interested if anyone's got uh if any of you, I'm sure a lot of my viewers and listeners out there are just as out there as I am in a lot of ways, and you also probably feel like you're from different planets. They're the people I'm trying to find. 
uh, if you are that sort of person yourself, in some sense, then um, share that with me, you know? Right, I shall leave it at that. See you later, alligator. See you soon. Baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, check out all our social media links. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.